Hey, it's Dave here, and welcome to part two of a step tracker build using the cheap yellow display. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'd recommend checking it out first as it goes through how to set up the step counter, how to flash the ESP32 board, and get the smiley face working based on your step count. In this video, I'll show you how to finish things off with the label trimming, 3D print orientation in Cura, and how to assemble everything in the final working device. Now when printing the parts, you're going to want them in this orientation. That way you don't need any build support. You've got the case here, which is for the ESP display to go inside. And I've actually made a different variant, which is this one here. It's had the edge removed in case you didn't want to print the label, or maybe you were just using this case or enclosure for another one of your projects. If I just change the angle, this is the one that you're going to need and you've got these edges around it, or you've got this one here without the edges, just in case you don't want the label. Then you've got this part of the back cover, which is two parts because this will join into that. However, there's two variations. When you look at this mount, you'll see there's some teeth here. I'm just going to zoom in. The reason I designed that is because when the case is going to fix onto that mount, if the screw is slightly loose, it tends to sort of flap back down again and it kind of solves that problem. But at the same time, by having those teeth, you're kind of forced to fix it at a specific angle. So if you don't want to use that version, you'll see here I've got another version where I've just removed the teeth. So just look in the description when downloading the files because one's going to include the word teeth. The same's also going to apply for the part of the back cover. You'll have this one here that's got the teeth and this one here that hasn't. So if you are going to use the version with the teeth, just make sure that that back cover version is the teeth version and the mount. So it's either going to be this one and this one, or this one and this one. Once you've printed out the template labels, you may not be able to see this clearly from the camera, but I've made some dotted lines so that if you are going to be using a trimmer, it's a little bit easier to make the cuts. If you don't have a paper trimmer, then just go ahead and use a pair of scissors. Now, once you've cut that out, the next tricky part is you're going to be cutting the inside. To achieve this, you're going to need a Stanley knife and some surface like an old piece of wood that you don't mind damaging that you can make the cuts on. And then just use a ruler and you're just gonna make four cuts on the inside. Once you've done that, it should look something like this. Now, if for some reason you didn't cut it perfectly and you had a few white outlines of the paper that didn't have the dark prints on, just grab yourself a Sharpie and you can just draw around the edges to hide that. These are all the parts that you're going to need to print. You've got the case for the ESP32 display, which just connects in like that. And then the back cover consists of two parts. I've designed it in such a way that you can 3D print it without using any build supports. So what you'll need to do is connect this here. So the back cover now looks like this. That's then going to join to the case. It should just snap in. So now you've got the back case and the cover joined together. You'll then need to print this. Ideally laminate it to make it a little bit nicer. If not, just use regular paper and not laminate it and it still looks quite good. And I've used blue tack to stick the things together and it's just going to connect here. Which now looks like that. 
Then you're going to need to join the case to the mount, which is this part here. It might be hard to see it from this video, but the version of the mount here is the one with those teeth, just so that the connection is a bit more stable. As mentioned earlier, there is a version without the teeth. So I'm just gonna join this together using a three mil screw. So it should look something like this once you've assembled it together. And then you've just got to connect either the USB-C or the micro USB cable, depending on what version you have, which is just gonna connect here. And then wait for it to power up. And then after about 20 seconds, it's gonna to connect to USB home and it should give you a step count reading. In this case, you can see I've done 1,921 steps. So it's miserable at me because I've done a very poor amount. And that's it. Your step tracker is now fully built, assembled and ready to keep you in check. Hopefully that gave you a fun little nudge to keep you moving or at least something cool to show off on your desk. If you have built one of these, I'd absolutely love to see it. Post a link in the comments to a photo or short video or share it in my Discord channel as that would absolutely make my day. If you found this helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up or check out some of my other home automation projects. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.